Hi, everyone. It's a great uh, pleasure to uh, speak here. My name is Miriam van Rijsen. I'm Professor of Data Science at the Leiden Uni University Medical Center. And um, I'm speaking here on behalf of a great team, uh, including uh, the coordinator of the Virus Outbreak Data Network, Professor Mpeza Mihigo, who is the Vice Chancellor of Kampala International University and the Executive Director of Vodan Africa, which is Francesca Oladipo, and who is Professor at the University of Lokoja in Computer Science and uh, a great team behind that. As I go through the presentation, I will be uh, identifying uh, all of the many people, engineers, uh, health experts who are part of uh, Vodan Africa. Um, it's a great pleasure here to present uh, this session in Africa. They do it all already. And let me share my screen and... Um, take you through my short presentation. I first of all, first of all, would like to emphasize again that this is a collaboration with many universities in Africa. It's a fantastic network of universities. Um, I mentioned already Kampala International University as the coordinator, but also McKelly University, I would like to mention they have done a great job in uh, engineering what I am uh, about to present here. Uh, also the colleagues of uh, GoFair and of course our sponsors, Philips Foundation, Invest International and NUFIC for the Digital Innovation and Skills Hub dish uh, that has taken up the capacity building of this initiative. So um, what is the problem that we had identified? The problem is the poor data quality and data stewardship in Africa. Is this only the case in Africa? I don't think so. We identified very similar problems in Europe and in uh, the United States, uh, for instance. But our focus in Vodan Africa is on Africa. And we uh, identified four key problems. First, that at large scale, data is taken away from the African continent. In the Ebola crisis in Liberia, the digital data was removed from the country and is no longer available. If you go to the Ministry of Health in, in Liberia, this data is not there. Then we also realized that data was removed from places where the data is produced. For instance, if you go to health facilities, you would often find that uh, a data clerk who is typing in the data uh, does not have, does not use, uh, is not able to visualize or analyze the data. So there's a data alienation from, there's an alienation from the data that is being produced uh, there and doesn't serve what, what really should be uh, the case uh, for ethical reasons at the point of care. We also realized in the COVID crisis that the health uh, data is really not representative and that averages are taken from uh, populations where really those averages are based on those that can afford healthcare, that can access, uh, for instance, um, testing facilities. And uh, so this uh, data is uh, biased. And, and uh, the more we actually um, are going to uh, innovate with uh, AI, uh, also machine learning, then the quality of the data and the representativity of the data really matters to the quality of these solutions. And then the fourth problem that we identified is that the innovation in uh, healthcare that is uh, driven on these new technologies has a very vertical structure and that it lacks interoperability at a horizontal level, again, at this um, point of care and within the places where doctors and patients um, come together uh, and where there should be an integration of data to maximize the potential of these uh, digital health solutions. So why uh, does this matter? It matters because data is really the new economic driver. Um, and uh, hence, therefore, let me present to you this.
from here on, from analyzing the problem, we started to identify how do we um, create a, a fair-based ethical pipeline. You've heard today already, I think, a lot on uh, on on fair, findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable data. And we thought, can we use this as a principle for federated data production, in which we can um, find a comprehensive approach to these uh, problems, these four problems that I just identified. So here you see uh, some, it's not comprehensive, some of the core um, uh, people working on the engineering of um, this, um, this uh, data structure, architecture, and the leadership here as well with their different uh, roles. Um, these are from universities in uh, eight countries in Africa, together with, um, with uh, Leiden University. And the idea, the core idea was, can we replace um, the current structures of bringing data to, together to clouds? Can we change that into a federated data visiting structure in which the data remains really physically in residence within the health facility and of course within the country where this data is produced and so then allow the algorithms to visit this data to create both um, high level uh, analytics across the different health facilities and different use cases within each health facility so you can see this architecture here uh, you have health facility one and health facility two and, and, and how many uh, you'd like to have. There is a one-time uh, data input, so the data is entered only once. And then through the localized uh, CDAR software, it is created uh, within a, a JSON or, or RDF machine uh, actionable and highly semantic data. And it's then stored in uh, Allegro Graph. And then from there, this is probably the most valuable uh, asset of this architecture. We can generate dy dynamic Sparkle queries on this data and across the facilities. So this is, I think, really uh, the high potential of this architecture. Um, but of course, we also wanted to uh, make sure that the data um, use, as is currently happening, uh, is um, part of the uh, proposition. So the data is automatically uh, exported and re-imported into the health information system that is used within the country and within the facility. Then in order to deal with uh, the question, what is the data use at point of care? We decided that um, in any um, proposition, the basic requirement would be an internal uh, dashboard that works with the data deployed within the facility so that in any case we make sure that the data is always usable for the patients and doctors uh, in the uh, facility proper and then we have an aggregate dashboard of real-time statistics these are depersonalized uh, computed uh, data from each of the facilities that allows us to have a really high volume uh, data pipeline for further innovation and other use cases um, and uh, deployment of this data in uh, in, in, in AI-based uh, solutions. So for this, it is really important that all the data privacy concerns are uh, carefully um, looked at. We have with each of the facility a, a data use agreement that is signed by the ministry uh, or the relevant authority in country, the health facility, the Vodan, research, uh, Vodan Africa Research Coordinator, um, and in the country, and then the Vodan Africa leadership. Um, and in this data use agreement, we have specified in great detail for which we have authority at this point in terms of uh, deploying the data for uh, the different use cases. So what we have achieved right now is that we can deploy 
the um, interoperable machine actionable fair data production. And we have done so in 88 health facilities and we can do this across borders because it works on the basis of data visiting, the data are held in residence. So we are currently doing this in eight countries in Africa. Um, we have created a um, ethical and fair data pipeline um, that um, respects the data sovereignty and is compliant with GDPR as well as the Vodan Africa regulatory framework as well as the regulatory framework in place in each of the locations. And then uh, we are also really proud that through the DISH platform, we have really begun to create the capacity for data stewardship. We have developed the curriculum and we can now really serve the FAIR community with um, data stewards, data curators that can help deploy health data, uh, scientific data, patient records, for uh, federated analytics. And in fact, we have done so together with uh, our colleague Meta Rustenberg uh, and our data steward, Alia Aktau, uh, for um, scientific uh, data and the life sciences uh, already and started to think how, you know, what is the um, delivery of that for um, uh, health analytics across the scientific community, the academic scientific community and the um, uh, health um, services community for which the patient records are the critical entry point into the creation of a, um, a multi-use case for services within health facilities. So we are also looking at how we can integrate these two different fields of science and of services. And with that, we hope that we have really made a contribution to the uh, fair internet of uh, data and services. And um, we hope to be uh, seeing many of you and to work with many of you for any fair data deployment, please contact us, the website is there. Uh, the publication link is here and also we are next week hoping to find that the publication of our special issue of data intelligence will be online. So with that, thank you Zonamwe and thank you uh, everyone in the audience for listening and hope to see you uh, soon. <laughs>